Welcome to Austin on the Air, candid conversations about air filtration and air quality and the impact it has on children and adults at school, work, and home. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Austin on the Air podcast. Today, I have an amazing guest with us. Um, I have Dr. Ashley. Um, She's a um, doctor of acupuncture and Chinese medicine, a functional medicine practitioner, and an expert in cellular detox, as well as epigenetics. So Dr. Ashley Beckman is here with us. Welcome, Ashley. I'm happy to be here. I love you guys and your product. (laughs) All right. So uh, maybe for our listeners, if you want, if you want to just kind of tell us a little bit more about, you know, your, your practice, your clinic, um, what you do, your passions. <clears throat> sure. So I have an online practice and I focus a lot on cellular detox. Most of my clients have mold toxicity. So that's kind of a common thread. And again, I work with people from anything from gut health and hormones and autoimmune to very complex layered cases with very sensitive clients. So it's a big spectrum, but Really, the main thread are these toxins and, you know, our lifestyle and habits that really make an impact on what we're doing. And part of that is figuring out how to clean up our home environment so that what we're doing every day in our foundations is set and you're giving your body the best chance it can. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So I, you know, I was looking through your website and there's so much information on there. And so, you know, I was thinking about like, I wanted to do this podcast um, and kind of dive into the topic of infections um, because we're obviously we're going into cold and flu season. And that is one of the things that, you know, everybody is talking about right now, or at least everyone's thinking about, Um, you know, whether it's COVID or the flu or even, you know, strep or RSV, whatever it is, this is the time of year where, you know, those seasons change and people start to get sick more often, right? Some people, you know, get very severe infections. Some people get very mild um, infections. And so I kind of wanted to talk about that, you know, because it's everybody is different, right? So different exposures and different body burdens, um, different genes. Maybe if you could maybe talk to me a little bit about um, epigenetics, um, you know, what it is and how epigenetics or genetics might Uh, make a person more susceptible or less susceptible to infections? Sure. So epigenetics is basically how our diet and lifestyle can affect our genetic expression. So the genes don't change per se, but what does change is our expression of them. So we have actually a lot of control over our genetics. And that's why I want to reiterate for clients because they really feel like, oh, you're doomed to get this because it's in your family or my dad has this or my grandfather. And mostly the habits are passed down by your family too. So we do have these learned things that we reiterate, but then it is actually up to us. We have a lot of control. Most of this is actually environmentally based. They say about 90% is lifestyle and your habits and only 10% is the genetics that we come in with. So again, it's a little different if you have a very specific genetic disorder, but this is on the whole, you know, for our immune system, what we're sensitive to and things like that. So people control back, right? You know, know that you're in control of your genetic destiny and you have a lot to do with how your body feels. Those percentages are pretty, I mean, <laughs> opening. Yeah, like that's really, and yeah. I think you're right. A lot of people do kind of just think, oh, well, I'm, I'm destined for this or doomed rather a lot of times. Yes. And so that's a good, good point that makes so yeah. many other things to <laughs> go into it. And I actually, I really was fascinated by epigenetics, firstly, just because of nutrition. So you can actually see, again, the genetics is sort of the blueprint of possibilities of what you're coming in with. And then life can change these things along the way. But you still can see from some of reports and things like that, things that you might need more or less of or certain foods that are better for you or not. So I think it's a nice guideline But what I look at specifically is how do we process toxins mostly because, and this is what you guys do is help with keeping the environment clean, right? But we 
you know, a lot of clients and myself were sort of like these canary in the coal mine clients where, you know, someone walks by, you get a headache or a migraine from perfume. And so there's a few things there, right? I was looking at why this happens and genetically you might not process certain toxins as well, right? Or you might have some issues with processing pesticides or mold or um, even just different types of chemicals, environmental toxins. And it's really interesting because once we know that, and that's what I love to look at with people, is we can optimize those pathways to make you less reactive. And so part of that's keeping your home, you know, and your air clean. And then part of it is use, using the right supplements that would help optimize those things that are maybe not ideal for us and make us, again, more susceptible. Like I was, I'm one of those people. And when I would run toxin labs, it was fascinating to me of all the things I was doing. And this was like in high, like after high school and whatnot, I still had a lot of chemicals in my body, even though I was one of the most strict with everything. Right. Wow. So there's a lot to do, but we can fine tune this process and make it easier. And that's what I love. And that also applies kind of to this in the fall. And as the seasons change, when your liver is more congested, we're just more susceptible to viruses and flus and things like that, and even seasonal allergies. And there are a lot of clients who can minimize those by cleaning up their body and their environment. Right. Okay. And we know, so, I mean, epigenetics, genetics, you know, that's kind of like, I feel like one layer of it, right? And then there's other people, you know, as far as when we're looking at like the body burden, because there's mm -hmm. some people, you know, that are going into cold and flu season that already might have pre-existing conditions or underlying health conditions. Maybe it's Lyme or like you had mentioned mold. Um, how do these, and you already kind of touched on it a little bit, but how do these impact, you know, a person during cold and flu season? Oh, for sure. So a lot of times too, you know, we'll, we'll start with mold, right? So mold is a huge, I would say a sledgehammer to the immune system, right? It, when it's present in our body or in our environment that we're exposed to repetitively, then your immune system kind of takes a hit. And then these other viruses and things, especially in your body are allowed to flourish, like latent viruses like Epstein-Barr or strep. And, um, and you basically can have a reactivation or just get sick more easily, right? And so if you have mold in your body, then it's important to try to work on getting that out for your immune system's sake too, so that you can be more fortified and fight off these things. There are other things too, like Lyme, you know, basically your immune system is kind of revved up trying to fight off these pathogens that are already just in your system. You know, I think people forget too that we are a big home, almost a world for these viruses, pathogens, yeast, bacteria, and they love the food that we give them. So it's important to not really feed them the things <laughs> yeah. that they love, which also weaken the immune system. You know, no one really wants to give up sugar and sweet things and even alcohol, but all of these things these pathogens love, and then it makes them replicate. And then we usually become sick from that waste process as well. So, and it's you know, funny you're mentioning like, you know, sugar and alcohol and cold and flu season. And what do we do? We have like Thanksgiving and Christmas where everybody's like binging on both of those things during cold and flu season. And there you have it, right? <laughs> yeah. And I, again, I, you know, a few of the things that are the most impactful to stay away from, no one really wants to hear that information. Oh. Like the sugar is probably number one. Right. Another one no one likes is going to bed early, right? That helps your immune system a lot. The other thing too is, um, you know, the whole concept of neuropsychoimmunology of basically watching news or hearing news or watching scary movies things that frighten your nervous system, lower your immunity, right? So again, I just want people to have and take back control over this, right? We, we do have a lot of things that we can do and they're not that hard really. I, you know, so we can implement them, but again, that's why it's nice to have things that you have in your home that also help on another level. That's interesting that you mentioned 
you know, frightening and, and things like that, like, because, and maybe you could talk just a little bit about that is the, the stress response and mm-hmm. how that impacts the immune system. I think a lot of people don't really think about that as we go into the season and, and how important it is to stay well balanced there. Well, and some of that, right, a big one is watching the news. So I even, I'm not a big fan at all. I I actually don't watch the news much, but even the way we consume information. So a video is more impactful into your brain and nervous system than reading something. So it's, it's also just kind of everywhere, right? These, you know, fear spreads much faster than good news. So we want to again, even just be really mindful of what you're absorbing and would listening. You say, would you say that's like a cortisol response or like a... Yeah. So it, um, it's a, almost like a fight or flight too, because most things then kind of scream off to your mind, like this is a danger. There's something bad's going to happen. And then that will impact your nervous system. And then that causes a blood sugar spike and also then an immune system dip. So okay. it's... Uh, yeah, and a cortisol spike. So again, there's so many things I think people just forget that we're always taking in data and then it causes a physiological response in the body. And we don't always think of that when we're listening to music or watching a movie, right? right? But those are very impactful and just as impactful as what you choose to put on and in your body every day too. Right. Yeah, because I mean, in many ways, you are putting that in your body. You're putting, you are, yeah. Which is having a physiological effect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'd like to kind of switch gears to, you know, we've talked about epigenetics. We've talked about um, pre-existing conditions and that sort of thing. Um, I'd like to kind of switch over into the environment, things that are not that we necessarily are putting in us, but the things that are around us that end up in us. Um and these contribute to obviously the the body burden too. Um, so if you could maybe you know talk to me a little bit about some of these environmental exposures um, and how they add to the body burden, whether it's you know like for example like the the air that we're breathing um, and all the different types of things that might contaminate that air, how that affects the the immune system. Sure. So. Again, I really have been fascinated by different types of toxins, and it often started with environmental toxins. Uh, you know, there's so many things that out off gas in the home, right? And then you can have kind of like sick building syndrome or just different, um, there's the different mycotoxins that could be in the air in your home. And a lot of people, I think, are just well, they're not as aware because unless you go through it, then it's really not on your radar, right? Right. And again, my whole practice has kind of been centered around different toxins and accumulation of those because we can test for them now so we can see what's in the body. And then again, our just our our world, and then again, that includes our home too, yeah. has a lot more in it, especially even with the way structures are built now, there's not a lot of airflow and movement. And so a lot of these things are sort of trapped in your home, which then means if it's in your bedroom and you're sleeping through this all night, it's impacting your system. And a lot of people think that we can just, we're, our bodies are made to heal for sure, but they are really being bombarded with too many things that are just we have not caught up with I would say to detox them properly yet because we're going too quickly right with right. creating these right. different toxins but yeah they a lot of these fall under kind of like biotoxins and environmental toxins so again I work a lot with mold exposure and Lyme and co-infections and the the mold is such a big piece that I really have found it's the number one root cause for my clients that are very sick with mold, with mystery symptoms or anything, even just from Hashimoto's and autoimmune to anxiety. But it's really, really critical that we have things in place in our home to clean this up. And again, that's only part of, part of it, but the air is really, really critical for us, you know, when you're trying to resolve issues in the body. I think too, a lot of these things are so um, unknown 
I mean, a lot of times people don't know that they have mold in their home or they don't know that they have a chemical sensitivity to a lot of the new carpet or new flooring or whatever that they have put in their home. Um, and I guess I'm thinking, you know, this as we go into cold and flu season, for a lot of places around the country, it gets colder, right? And yeah. so people then close their windows. And so they have less ventilation. Um, and so turn on the HVAC, right? Right, right. And, and that a lot, that's a big source for people that wasn't uh, my home and it just spread the mold everywhere. <laughs> so <laughs> you, uh, you know, there's a lot of things too just some kind of like maintenance and kind of like how people need to change filters and whatnot. There, there are things to do in the home to make sure and see about just keeping on top of things. Um, but most people, and again, this happened to me. So this is why, again, I'm really passionate about mold toxicity is most people's homes look immaculate, right? You, you don't even really smell anything either, but you know, a lot of people diminish the, the severity of something that I think like, oh, well, it's just musty. That's normal. Right. But musty usually means mold. Right. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Or at least warrants uh, further investigation. Um, yeah. Yeah. A little bit more consideration maybe. Yeah. Yes. So again, there's a lot, you know, that we sweep under the rug because we just think like, oh, this is normal. Or, you know, most kitchens have a little bit of dampness under the sink or the bathrooms all have mold because uh, there's maybe not great ventilation, but these things can add up depending on what kind of person or, you know, the child and how sensitive they are too. And that's what I see more and more. But again, this, especially as we go into the fall, you know, we want to try to have things that are helping your immune system and keeping you fortified and strong, as opposed to going into it already kind of weekend from your home environment, right? That, that should be your safe place. So in your healing place. Right, exactly. Um, so we've talked about a lot of different things that would impact the immune system and make you more or less susceptible um, to infection. So obviously I'm feeling, you know, detox here is crucial. That's a, a clearly a crucial step because obviously when you take that in, like you said, you know, we're overwhelming the system. Um, I saw that on your website, you have, various products and services that kind of really focus on detox. Maybe, you know, if there's people listening to you right now and they're like, oh my gosh, this sounds like me. Like, what, what do I do? How can I, maybe just kind of walk me through, like, what are some of the things that you have? What are some of the products or tests that you offer services uh, that people can take? Oh, uh, yeah. The, well, the first thing I offer is a health, like a um, health assessment, right? It's usually it's, it's more than 15 minutes, even though it's 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. um, and I basically just kind of want to go over with someone, you know, what's going on so I can make sure and see that I can help them, right, if it's in my wheelhouse. And so many things really do come back to toxicity of either environmental chemicals or, you know, may, it could even be the wrong kinds of food that they're eating, that those are can be toxic to the system, too. And, and then again, are there some other biotoxins like mold or lime? And, but I do see a lot of toxicity with pesticides too and metals. And, and then of course I look at gut health too. But the first step is for me to just have a conversation with somebody, make sure this is what I work on and that they have a condition that I work with. And then, then we move into kind of a deeper dive um, initial consultation that's different amounts of time, uh, usually 45 or 60 minutes, just depends. And then, and then um, during then I would decide what labs we run. But one thing that I love, because again, this is just what I'm the most passionate about, are, there's such easy tests for environmental toxins, right? Okay. And pesticides and, um, and even heavy metals, and they're all at home tests. So we just send it to your house, usually urine, sometimes hair, um, genetics is saliva. And, and then I get a you really good as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you start and you, so you can see exactly where they're. Yeah. You can see enough. some of the possible pitfalls or like where someone might have more of a weakness, right? Mm -hmm. Detoxing these specific toxins. And again, it's never usually one thing as we know, right? It's the layers that have gotten someone to where they are, where they're, you know, a lot of my clients are also 
like can't get out of bed and really, really sick to, you know, some that have anxiety and gut health, right? So there's a very wide spectrum and everything is very customized and personalized, which is why I love the labs. And basically what we want to do though, is then I create kind of their roadmap of what we're going to focus on because we still need to go through a lot of layers and address address everything. But again, the, the mold is such a huge piece. And because it is so impactful for the immune system, when we clear that up, some of the other things go away, right? And not that it's different now. Not everyone that used to come to me came to me for mold. They came for Hashimoto's and gut issues and Epstein-Barr. But it's not usually the viruses that are the problem, right? It's how is our body not able to handle the multitude of things going on? Why is the body so overburdened that it can't deal with the thing it's supposed to deal exactly. with? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we peel back the layers and then kind of, and then I put together a plan of what to address and what order. And, uh, you know, and then again, what are the things that are foundations of health, like clean air, clean food, clean water? When you go into bed, do you, you know, do you move? What's your stress level and mindset, right? So no one really likes those things, even though all have to do them. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, air purifiers and things are a critical piece because not everybody can move out of mold, right? Um, and that is a big thing. So I'm, I'm a bit more moderate, right? I, you know, we look and we have to assess kind of the whole situation, and really clean up your environment as much as possible if you also can't move to a new one. And um, and then again, I usually work with families because if, if there's mold, then usually everybody in home is affected, right? So a lot of times I work with little kids and the moms, the dads tend to be less affected. <laughs> so uh, I do have more complicated bodies though, right? We have a little more going on. Yes. But still, there are some you know, there's still some men that get knocked down by these toxins too. So it's, I mean, it's my favorite thing to put this all together and again, see what's going on. But I love labs because it's, it's easy now to, to find out. Awesome. And that's, that was one of the next things I was going to ask you, you know, about the environment, you know, at our, obviously at Austin Air, that's, that's our philosophy, you know, is to clean the air because it's a lot a lot of times easier to clean your environment, to clean your air than it is <laughs> to clean the body once it's already in there. Oh, yeah. The damage that it's done. Um, you know, I guess, would you agree with that? And if so, you know, what's your, what's your experience there? Have you seen people use um, air purification in these types of situations and, and benefit from them? I think that they're an integral piece of anybody that's go. I mean, I think they should be in everybody's homes because overall our air quality, you know, even if, again, if you're, even if your home is new, then you have all these chemicals that need to get right. out. Right. And people don't know. And why would they know unless they were someone sensitive to chemicals that a lot of people feel sick from new homes and especially the carpet. And I mean, I think, you know, things that are re, uh, not refur refurbished, but it's the finishings, right? Yes. Lacquer and all that stuff. It is, I can't even, I'm someone I can't even be, you know, a hundred yards from something that's newly painted. Yeah. Smell so, <laughs> again, I'm a more sensitive one, but I, you know, I probably didn't get really great air purifiers for a long time. And, and then again, once I dove into more mold toxicity, then I was looking at them very differently, right? Because it wasn't like I was just trying to get VOCs out of a home that was newly painted. It was very specific to mold. And then again, if I was trying to do all this deep dive research, you know, for myself, then I knew that I needed it for my clients. And, and then that's where I found you guys. And that's the only one I recommend because, you know, once you do all the research, <laughs> and, uh, you, you stick to what works, right? And I have, multiple and again we you do need to clean up your air especially when you are going through this and i think people overlook it right it's um and it's the easiest thing especially for someone who who can't move right like you have to clean the things and there's all that process but 
you have to get keep your air clean. That's just critical, especially in the bedroom where you're sleeping and supposed to be recovering all night too. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's, you know, something that people forget a lot of times too is, you know, what I hear all the time, you know, well, the mold's everywhere and it's, you know what I mean? But it's, and people are exposed to it all the time, but to your point earlier, not everybody has the genetics or epigenetics, you know, that they're not dealing with it the same. They don't have the same pre-existing conditions or body burden or, you know, environmental exposure. So everybody's so different and reacts so differently to it. So I would, I would agree. <laughs> and they don't even, just because someone has the genetic propensity to not deal with mold as well, doesn't mean that, um, that, that the other people like just clear things easily. I don't have that genetic disposition, but someone in my immediate household does. I had way more symptoms than they did because of my body burden and my body's ability to detox things, right? So again, where I love looking at the genetics and it's helpful, you still have to go with where the person is now and today and what symptoms they have. Yeah. But it is a good, it can be a good barometer of just, oh, this this person might not handle this as well. And that can go for mold or metals or pesticides. And I just love that we can check that now. Because again, that's like my favorite part of this kind of personalized medicine that we have. Yeah. And I think it it's so especially needed, you know, as we, for example, going into cold and flu season when people are tending to get sick and it's always you know, I find it interesting, like some people get very, very severely ill um, from things. And then some people barely, you know, barely notice they have it and they're just skating by, you know, and it it, it is fascinating because of like you're saying, there's so many other things maybe that that person has been exposed to or has to detox and it creates a ruckus. <laughs> Well, and in Chinese medicine, which is another huge foundation for me, we talk about constitution a lot, right? So you do know the people that are just these hardy humans that kind of nothing phases them, right? And they generally have a very robust immune system and they don't usually get taken down by a, you know, a cold or a flu, but then you get some people that they just catch everything, right? And so this is something else that I add into kind of my practice is to try to figure out what type of person this is. And then even in Chinese medicine, like we nourish the lungs a lot, right? Which just makes sense. Mm -hmm. But the lung is actually the organ of the fall season. So there are foods that you eat, there are certain herbs, and all of those are to fortify that lung and organ so that they're able to withstand you know, the cold and the dryness and the viruses and bacteria that we come in contact with. Okay. Yeah. That's fascinating. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I do a lot of things just even on that because there's certain, again, foods yeah. and oils and things uh, and practices that are just great for that. And one of the biggest is just wear a scarf, right? Like cover your throat so that you keep that bundled up. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> we can go scarf shopping. <laughs> um, you know, we talked a little bit about it, but you know, you are obviously an Austin Air reseller. Um, and you have our products. Um, you know, as you were kind of, you mentioned that you were looking at all the different ones and that that one worked the best. Um, you know, what are some like other reasons why you chose Austin Air over these other technologies? I feel like you know, since COVID nineteen, there's been oh my gosh, so many different air purifier brands that have come up on the market. And it's it's difficult, I think, for people sometimes to like be able to look past the cute little aesthetics that just came out and, and choose something that's actually going to help them heal or help them stay safe and protected. Yeah, and so again, you know, I have, um, which one do I have? I think the bedroom ones, but... Um, I have quite a few in the house and basically, no, sorry, help me. That's what I have. Okay. That's what I have. And I basically wanted to make sure again, for me, it, the biggest concern was mold and mycotoxins. So 
when I was looking at even the ones that you offer, that's what I was sort of gravitating toward and actually like a large surface area, right? For the room sizes, which is again, something that helps you determine the right one to get. But I, so I really needed the carbon filter for the mold, especially. And then again, I'm not one that has allergies, right? So I know that there's different ones kind of for like different purposes, but pretty much my whole practice is all mycotoxin related. And so that's the, the main thing. And then the fact that honestly too, that the filters you change every five years, because I also did a cost analysis, right? Yeah, right. And, you know, there's such one that is extremely popular and recommended by lots of people. And when I was just figuring it out, I mean, I still go with what's the best one. So for me, that's where I landed with Austin Air. Mm -hmm. And then when I worked out the pricing, because it's a little more upfront, right? Mm -hmm. But then over the five years, it's exponentially less. Right. And just the hassle, right? It's not remembering to, uh, you know, buy the filters, change them and all that stuff. You know, and in our busy lives, it's just one more thing to yeah. add. To the exactly, exactly. I think too, like when you're talking about, okay, the, the purpose of purchasing this machine is to clean the room, to get rid of the chemicals and the things that are overburdening your body and, and making you sick. You know, ours are, they're steel bodies, they're not plastic. So we think about microplastics, you know what I mean? And then they're, they're powder coated, they're not painted. So again, the paint off gassing, I think it's really important to look at what the purifier that's supposed to clean the room is actually doing. Is it putting more in into the air than, you know what I mean? Than what you're trying to get out. Also, I see all these different ones, you know, and maybe they're, I don't know, they're, they're smart purifiers, right? They, they connect to Wi-Fi or they connect to this or that and they have sensors and buzzers, but um, you know, it seems to me that connecting to Wi-Fi is going to not be a positive thing, especially when we're talking about mold and mycotoxins, right? Yeah, accelerates that. And also, too, you know, a lot of my clients are sensitive to many things, and Wi-Fi is one of them. They don't really want more Wi-Fi devices all over their house, right? So I, yeah, I mean, in that part, too, I'm such a anti-plastic person like I go um, that was probably the first xenoestrogen and environmental toxin that I studied in depth like 20 years ago so oh, I yeah I, I would not purchase one that has, is made of plastic and again these you know these filters are hurty they're yeah it's not yeah. it's really good it just feels like a machine that's here really helping and and at least it takes one thing off my plate, right? And then it takes yeah. off my plate for five years. It's not like it takes it off my plate and you recall to order it over and over. Right. So again, I yes. love it. And, and it's, <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, um, it, that's kind of all that I had. I don't know if there's anything that you, that I didn't ask that you feel is important for our listeners to know or understand this time of year. <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, to me, I talk a lot about foundations with my client, right? And at the top of that is the, is clean air. So the fact that now I feel, calm, you know, it's like, you want to feel confident that you found what you like, what works, what you can suggest to clients, or again, what you want to have in your home for your family, right? If you're the one purchasing this. And so again, it's a critical piece of Again, what I call and many other practitioners foundational health. You have to have these things in order. And it's really the basis of what you're doing in order to actually heal from other things that are impacting you and your health negatively. But clean air is, you know, top of it. Yeah, 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 exactly. So if people are listening and they are interested in your products and services, how do they get a hold of you or where do they find you? So I'm on Instagram a lot and I do a lot of videos, Dr. Ashley Beckman. My website is drashley.com. So just D-R-A-S-H-L-E-Y.com. And yeah, those are kind of the, the two main places. But if you want to yeah, have more information and education, I do that more on um, online. 
online. Yeah. And then I have some, I have some new programs and things all about mold toxicity and just trying to help people because it's a really big thing and it's such a big upheaval. But the first thing in someone's life, the first thing I always say is if you don't have, you know, a really good air purifier and it's this one, this is what I suggest starting because you have a long period of so many decisions to make, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a very overwhelming process. And um, I try to make it as easy as possible by having done all the research that I can do on the favorite things that work, you know, because the environment in your home is one piece. And then again, I'll help you get it out of your body. So. And I feel like if you're, if you're going through all of that to detox and get rid of it, you're only <laughs> hurting yourself if you're not actually getting rid of where it's coming from. Oh, for sure. And the other thing is too, is it makes you feel better having this because, you know, even though someone remediates, there is mold in most homes that comes and goes. And so we need something continuously cleaning the air. And that's why it's just such a, it's basically just a staple that people should have in their home with mold toxicity or not, right? There's so many things that we're exposed to in our home air and especially in cold and flu season. Like this, this just helps. So I keep saying this, it's over in my corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have so much there again. <laughs> yeah. And then other places in the home too. But again, it's really, really critical. And I just like having the peace of mind that one thing is off my plate, right? In regards to all of this, because everything else you have to keep doing over and over, you know, changing yeah. protocols, That's <laughs> taking true. supplements, that is just like purchase set and then turn, turn it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I am super grateful that you came on today. I think we talked about a lot of really good information that's going to help a lot of people kind of navigate, you know, this next season that we're upon right now. So I thank you. Um, and I guess we'll talk to you soon. Yes. Thank you so much. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Austin on the Air. For more information on air filtration, air quality, and respiratory health, visit austinair.com.